what is going on everybody this is beanie and today is my birthday happy birthday beanie thank you guy who is watching my video but anyways yesterday um mlb the show or sds they dropped some new content on us and i'm gonna review that today the two new cards that we got it's, it wasn't a lot of content it was just a little bit but the two cards they dropped on us were very very good so i'm gonna take a little bit of time i might go a little bit deeper into these cards than i usually do uh with my reviews i try to keep them a little quicker um and uh and yeah let's go ahead and get into the player review Okay, the first guy that we're going to talk about is, in my opinion, one of the best pitchers available right now in MLB The Show. Uh, one of the best pitchers that you can acquire right now in MLB The Show. I mean, he, the, the 91 Mike Scott is going to be overlooked by a lot of people, but I think that that's going to be a mistake. I think that they're going to be stuck in that MLB 17, MLB 16 mindset where velocity and sinkers were king. And while sinkers are still really, really powerful in this game, velocity really doesn't have the same kind of importance because you can't really dominate this year with a fastball regardless of how hard you throw. So it makes pitchers like Mike Scott, who are a little bit more finesse oriented, makes them very viable. And first, let's start off with, well, I guess his stamina, but that's his first attribute. His stamina is great. He's gonna be able to go deep into games for you. So that's all good. I don't really rate pitchers off that though. So talking about his per nines, he has borderline elite per nines, 95, 93. As far as pitchers that are starting pitchers that are available right now, that's almost as good as it gets. Um, there, there aren't many guys that are available right now that break that 100 threshold. So 95, 93, it is elite for players that are out right now. Now, once the immortals and everything start to drop, that might uh, not be the case and he might not be quite as good once those guys come out but right now there isn't going to be a guy that shrinks your pci much more than this mike scott does when 95 hit per nine to 93 k per nine and that is so important because something i've noticed is that three things affect the crap out of your pci it affects it a ton and that is the pitchers hitting k per nine and your opponents and and the hitters vision so if you ever get a situation where you're facing like a Joey Gallo or somebody with really low vision, this Mike Scott is going to have a huge advantage because that Gallo's PCI is going to be extremely, extremely tiny. And for, as far as this guy's control, he has great control, but as far as I'm, I can tell, control really doesn't matter that much. Walk per nine is much more important in regards to how easy it is to use your interface and to locate your, uh, your pitches and everything. So 70 walk per nine, it's not that great, but it's still enough for you to be able to hit your spots when you want to. Um, you might make a mistake here and there with this card, but for the most part, he's going to be fairly accurate. Um, it would be nice if that were a little higher, considering that he doesn't throw all that hard or whatever. But it's still, it's fine. It's workable. Um, and then let's get into his stuff and his per nines. Uh, obviously, the big knocking point on this card is the fact that he only has 66 velocity. He only throws his fastball in the 92 to 94, maybe 95 range. Um, and that's not super hard, but I think that it's enough to be able to, to, to really uh, tap into that per not, the, the shrunken down PCI. I think it's enough to keep the hitter off balance to really uh, th start to thrive off of his off-speed stuff, which is where this card really starts to become more attractive. His off-speed stuff, he's got a great splitter, he's got a great slider, he's got a great curveball. That 10 mile per hour delta between his four seam and his splitter is really big because usually you want to have a slightly bigger delta than that, but with a splitter as opposed to a change up, it has a little bit sharper break on it and you can get by with having a smaller delta. Usually splitters only have like a six, seven, eight mile per hour delta. So a 10 mile per hour delta is actually really good. And then he has a just an absolute hammer of a slider, hammer of a curveball. Can you say hammer of a slider? I really don't know. I think that's more just for like a curveball. But he has a hammer of a curveball and a and I don't know like a like a, a wrench for a, for a slider. I don't know. He has a really good slider though that can really uh, play well against. Um, against right-handed hitters. I would avoid throwing it against left-handed hitters because a slider that has that much break, sometimes it can get away from you. Sometimes you can hit your opposing opponent and uh, 
your opposing opponent. And uh, so I would stick against lefties. I would stick with the splitter, the four seam, and the curveball, and put my slider in the back pocket until you're facing a righty. And if you're facing a righty, I think you can go to town with that slider. You can really start to pound it and uh, keep your opponent off balance. Overall, I think this is a very solid card. It would be nice if he threw a little bit harder, or maybe if he had one extra pitch that he could uh, that he could go to, maybe like a sinker or something like that. But overall, I think that this, I don't know if he hits quite ace level, because I think ace level for me, as far as my grades go, is like 8.5 and above that would be, for me, considered an ace. But he gets very close to that mark, and I ended up giving him a fag of an 8.2. All right, next up, and our last card, actually, only have two cards to review, is the 95 overall Willie McCovey. McCovey Cove's namesake. And I have no doubt with this card, you are going to be hitting a ton of balls into McCovey Cove. Uh, first off, okay, he's a first baseman. So that tells me that the thing that we care about is his hitting. Is he a good hitter? The answer to that question is an unequivocal yes. Now, ver now he does have some uh, platoon splits. He is much better versus righties than he is lefties. But against lefties, he's still... Uh, well above average he is in fact I would say very good against lefties with 81 contact and 79 power he's got 88 vision so you're not going to have any PCI problems or anything like that and then against righties he is just a monster 98 contact uh, 116 power if I would have been doing my top 10 uh, first baseman list after this card had come out he probably would have slotted in somewhere between I, I, I mean he'd definitely be in the top three I don't know if I would put him over uh the uh who was it oh shit I forgot who, who was uh Willie Stargell I always get him and uh and McCovey mixed up it, it's just I guess it's the Willie thing but um it would have been pretty tough for number two I still think the Bagwell is a little bit better but it would have been tough between McCovey and this card because I think both are really 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 solid um this one is a little bit more balanced uh he, against lefties this one has a little bit better contact not as much power i think i think that's kind of how they match up yeah a little bit more contact not as much power and this and the stargill also has much less vision as well so i think you're better off against a lefty i think i would rather have this mccovey even though he has significantly less power because you're not going to have any pci problems and i found lefty on lefty that you kind of need a bigger pci because i sometimes i'll struggle with a guy like joey gallo lefty on lefty um, while I think if I had a bigger PCI guy that still had a little bit of power, that I would have a lot more success. So I, I actually think this card is a little bit more balanced than that Willie Stargell. And for that reason, I might even put him at number two. Um, he's also got uh, elite, like basically perfect discipline, so check swinging isn't going to be a problem. If you're somebody that believes clutch actually does something in at-bats, he has very high clutch as well, so that should be a bonus for you. The one that, or the two big knocks on this card, obviously, is his fielding and his speed. He's not going to be very fast. Um, you're going to want to hit long balls, and you're not going to hit a lot of doubles or anything like that with this card unless you really hit it into the gap. Uh, defensively, he's He's not going to be an asset, uh, but I don't think he'll be too much of a liability. It's not just atrocious defense for first base. Usually that's 50 and below, but it's not good. It's not going to be great defense or anything like that. So overall, though, I think the defense and the speed doesn't really matter that much. Um, you're Obviously, you're going to be getting a great hitter. And uh, that's what you want. Now, do you want to go out and spend the stubs required to get this card? He is uh, a, a reward for picking up all of the Father's Day equipment. Um, and that's a question that I don't feel comfortable answering. For me, I don't think I would um, just because I don't like to spend, spend a ton of stubs addressing first base because I don't really think it's worth it. I think you can fill first base a lot cheaper. Um, usually, so I'm, I'm not that big into this card for that reason, but at, at isolated on its own, this is an extremely good card that if you picked him up, I could not begrudge you that at all. And I ended up giving him a fag of an 8.5. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you. I, I'm actually kind of happy that SDS only came out with two cards for me to review. It helps me get this uh, video out really quick, and it helps me go and be able to enjoy my birthday, um, you know, during the day. And then maybe tonight I'll come back and stream. It depends on a few, uh, on a few things, and, and you know, just whatever is going on. 
But um, later on today, I might come back and stream. And uh, yeah, so if I do, um, I hope to see you there. I love you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. New to the channel, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. I love you guys. I will see y'all tomorrow. But until then, peace. Mm -hmm.